world. We live already. Hello. <laughs> Jazz fans. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Gosh. <laughs> Gosh, there I was having a good old rant on the HM page. And um, now, we, now we're now we here, literally 20 minutes later. Uh, what will we talk about tonight? Well, what's it been like today, Gary? It's been chucking it down, hasn't it? For those of you in other parts of the world, that means raining very hard. Yes. Hi, Marianne. Marianne. Good to see you. Angela's here. Marianne. Hello. Marianne. Hello. <laughs> wasn't day I just three. ranting? Wasn't yes, day, day three. three for Marion. Wasn't I just ranting, Angela, on the uh, <laughs> on the HM page? Hello, hello, Pia. Oh dear. Well, got my goat. Got my goat. Honestly, few people bobbing around Facebook, trying to sort of say, you know, quiet on down. Don't be so loud. Don't, don't, don't talk about it don't talk about osteonecrosis oh long toes are hideous there's a middle ground <laughs> just just need to get that one off my chest uh, sarah says she, hi and she's like yes <laughs> hello hello sandra from czech hello started hi, the challenges today Ooh, whoop, 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 whoop. well done Mary. awesome excellent well done you Hi, Susan Garvin. Good to see you. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Anne Chopra's here. Just signed up for the 15-day challenge. Whoop, whoop. Awesome. We can't wait to hear what you what you think of it. Tell everybody in the group. Tell everyone in the group. Tell everybody what you think of it. Dawn's here. Hello, Dawn. Hi, Dawn. Celia's here. Hello. I was getting worried I couldn't find you. Don't worry. We're here. We're here. Don't worry. We were, here. Uh, we're, we, a little we were bit running late. a little late. As always. Yes. Yeah, as always. Uh, Sarah says, found out today my hay is Timothy. Is that okay if not if not mixed meadow? Um yes, it's it's well, it's better than rye. Uh it is okay. It just depends. Some uh Timothy is wrapped in like haylage and uh can be a bit punchy, but it's a monoculture, so it's a mono grass. It's it's you're not mixing it, so it's okay, but it's not going to give that diverse range of nutrients. Bit like if we ate one thing and didn't change it, you've got to have a diverse array of nutrients. So okay, but see if you can find something else to go with it. All right. I know it's not, I know it's like easier said than done. What did I say? I know it's easier said than done. Uh, Louise been out trimming in the Batmobile. <laughs> now driving home after finishing the hood. She's got some. She's got <laughs> the honestly she's got Batman bits. She's got <laughs> Batman bits. She's she's changing her car into a Batmobile. She's actually got things for the wing mirror now. Have you seen them? I haven't seen the wing mirror. She's got a bit on the bonnet, and she? And then she's yeah. got bits on the wheels. Oh, my God. No, she's got she's got these. Louise has got these things on the wing mirror now. It's absolutely horrendous because you can't see. It's like com completely covering up the blind spot. But it does look cool. I have to say, well done, Louise. <laughs> how's, how's Carolyn taking it? Any good? Uh, Catherine, hello. Good morning. Good morning. And well, yes. Good morning from down under. Vivian is here. Hello, Vivian. Hello from Australia, Facebook user. Am I right that on the challenges you can take more than one day each module or is it strictly to be done in 15 consecutive days? Well, yes, sadly. You don't get it opened up to you. You can't, it, it, each day is a lesson with maybe some bonus things in there. Sometimes there are, sometimes there aren't. And you won't get the next day opened up for 24 hours. That's how it works. Um, but once you're through those 15 days, it stops people, it stops people from, it stops people from I'm just getting a message from my daughter telling me she's been and had a little thing out of her arm today. Um, where was I? Where was I? Gary, help me out. Uh, the 15 day challenge, um, it opens oh. up each, on each day. Now you can take longer than 15 days if yeah. that's what you're asking. But if you want to do more than one day, the answer is no. 
You ha- they, they open up in each day and there is a reason for that. Binging. It stops people binge, binge watching. Binge and, and whinge. <laughs> bin, binge watching because otherwise people will actually take, it doesn't sink in as well. We know that there's a certain amount that people can concentrate and information that can take in. And it's nice to go away and allow for that information to Mm. properly get into your brain. Mm. Initially, it was just all open and they could do it as much as they wanted. And that worked to a degree. But Mm, this is working better. This This is working better. Tons better. The way that we've reformatted it is working so much better for everybody. It might be a little bit frustrating because we know you want more. We know you want more. But you've got us every day. <laughs> so, yes, um, you you can take longer than the 15 days, but you can't, can't do, do it, it in less than, the less than the 15 days. And 10-day challenge does not begin until the 15 day is finished. And um, yes. actually, this could be a moment, Gary, where you can tell people what would happen if we did t- send to sell just oh yes people yes. are very um, keen on the trimming side of things aren't they yes um a lot of people have come to us and say well i'm really only interested in the trimming can i not do the 10 day only um, and then we go back and say no <laughs> um no the reason for that is and and well perhaps we're doing ourselves a disservice because if we, we could put sell just a lot more. the tr- we could sell a lot more of the the ten day challenges. We really could because that's the the, the crux of some people want just that bit because they, just want they the think trimming their, bit. their 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 diet and management and all of that about the background of the horse and getting into the nitty gritties of the actual hoof. Um, you need to know all of that before you get to the trimming. Um, so. It's not about us going out and just getting as much money as we want. It's about us making sure that the knowledge that you think you've got in your head is actually in your head. Uh And very often it isn't. It isn't. So it's not about just the trimming. It is about the whole horse and the whole package. (laughs) And and to be quite honest, if you went to... um, uh, if you went into the 10 day Sorry. there would be lots of references in the 10 day that wouldn't make sense whatsoever it is it is a package and it is layered learning um, and it's it, that's the way it works that's the but way. the reason that we split it so that you do the 10 day after is because a you do need a break because it's it's 25 days and and um and also because there will be some people who think that they don't need the trimming. And so we give them the options of going through and learning all about the background to it. But then they get to, they get to the end. Honestly, we've not had anybody not take up on the 10 day. And then they go, um, ooh, I just want to do the 10 day as well, just because I want to see what's in that. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, hello from Canada. Got pictures of my mules' hooves, but having trouble downloading. We'll keep trying. In the meantime, I will just sit back and enjoy today's live. So, Lydia, you can send it to us via WeTransfer if you prefer, if if that helps. Um, downloading, you know, if you're sending it to us, yeah, WeTransfer is pretty good. But obviously, yeah, you've got to get it downloaded to a device, I suppose, first to to enable you to do that. But just if you get into to trouble ask him (laughs) him drop me a message and then we can help yeah uh my plan is to wrap it from dry bales for storage okay one day at a time one day at a time time. absorb watch absorb watch absorb morning dry no rain in australia where we live challenge is fantastic marvelous absolutely do it i'm on two day two of the 10 day challenge and loving it who's that who's that that i've got to try and find it now you'll never be able to find who is it uh yes brilliant how lovely for you it has been throwing it down here today really really rainy hello from that lady before was vicky ware i've caught up oh hello vicky (laughs) 
uh, uh, look at look at this avatar with these ponies sat down. Hilarious. Uh, that's Joe Tracy Kirk. Hello from New Zealand. She's not noticed yet. I'll send you a pic. Caroline's not noticed. I think it's great. I don't think you should stop there, Louise. I think you need to keep subtly changing your car into the Batmobile. I personally am all for it. Absolutely 100% behind you. You can blame it on me. Um, hello, Team Marvellous. is Angela Garberg from Southern France. Just signed up on the 15-day challenge. Ooh, okay. Awesome. I'm so looking forward to it. We've got like streams of people, reams of people with all their T-shirts on. But for those of you who haven't signed up for the 15 day who can't or for whatever reason, just at the moment, that's OK, because at some point we are going to do Phoenix Warrior T-shirts, too. So you can have something to wear as well. Because you you need something too. Susan Garvin says, sorry, wasn't clear. I meant, can you take more than 15 days, which you have now? Sorry, I was yes, being dense. Yes. Gary understood. Of course, you absolutely can. You can take as long as you like. It's just that you can't do it shorter. Yeah. Marion says, my opinion of my barefoot trimmer that has been doing my horse for 10 years is evolving now that I watch the YouTube videos and the lives and start the challenges. I'm not scared to take over anymore. Thank you for that. Phoenix Warrior. I it's do you know something? Um a lady who is also one of our hoof care professionals who trained uh like me with the same organization as me, she said to me um the other day, you know, it it's we always wanted the owners to know more. But with only a few hoof care professionals that we are around the world, we're only going to be affecting such a small amount of people. So we, and there are so many horses in that are in trouble. So we need to reach as many people as possible to, to enable them to be empowered. And then she said, but of course, doing that makes some hoof care professionals a bit like twitchy because they don't like the idea of owners getting in the know and having knowledge, they don't like it. And yet, honestly, 99%, if probably more, of, of barefoot trimmers, mm -hmm. of barefoot trimmers that go to train are people who are owners, like you guys, who have gone and got the bug and gone, I got to do more of this. I want to get out and do more of it. So that's just silly, isn't it? But there are hoof care professionals out there that don't want you to know. It's like, it's a secret. <clears throat> I used to work in, uh, before I was a trimmer, I worked in industry. Um, and there were so many people in industry that I worked with that uh, and I could, I could never get to grips with it. Because I'd say, right, okay, so you're really good at this. Now, I've got some other members of the team that would really benefit from learning that skill. And then they just turn around and say, I'm not sharing my knowledge. That's what you pay me for. That's what makes me unique. And I thought, well, that's a team effort, isn't it? Oh. And I said, well, you've got two choices then. People want to be in the team or you're or... off your pop. Bye. Bye. Off your pop. People want to be, in... be indispensable. Plus, yes. don't they? They want to be, I'm indispensable. Plus, they also don't want you to know, maybe, because you might find out that maybe they don't know that much either. That happens a lot. When, when, when people start to learn the stuff that we teach them, and remember, we've been teaching this sort of stuff for years. It's just that it's become a lot more open now. Um when they learn the things that we're teaching them, they go away and start, like you said, Marion, looking at what your hoof care professional has been doing for 10 years. Jenny Hapiri said this. She's here tonight. She said this. And, and Jenny said, you know, she just accepted that they knew what they were doing and the hoof care professionals and just accepted that. And then when she, it's like suddenly a light bulb goes off and you go, Oh, and you can, it's like you've taken off those glasses, put on a new pair of glasses and you completely see it with fresh eyes. And like I said to Jenny, it's like opening that door, just a little crack. And then you go, oh, I've just, 
heard something about mm, osteonecrosis taking the toes off i'm not sure i'm happy about that because i know that's what's happening with my horses and then that crack opens a bit more and like i said you stick your head through before you know it you're climbing through as fast as you can and then you're out the other side and you're like oh there's all this stuff out here i didn't know existed and then you turn around to look back in the dark in the dark tunnel and you think i was in that dark tunnel and i couldn't see it it was right in front of my face but I couldn't see it because I didn't know. And just a bit of information changes everything. Changes everything. My T-shirt arrived today. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I want a picture. That's Debbie. It, put That's it, Debbie. Deb Let's have it in the group. Go on. Be brave. Get a picture of yourself. Selfie with the horse. Uh, did I have to be with the horse? Of course. Uh, that rhymed. I'm a pivot and didn't know it. Randy's here again this evening. Hello, Randy. We missed you. Hi, all. Unfortunately, I couldn't attend the last live sessions, but make it tonight. Too busy building a new stable for two ponies that will be coming here soon. Oh, I hope that stable door will never be closed, Randy, that they will go in and out of the stable. Jenny says, I love the challenges. Once downloaded, I can watch them as many times as I like. You can. That's cool yes, as well. Can. Because Je Jenny was very much listening to them stuffed in her pocket like a podcast, which is great because you can just listen to it. And then if we're talking about a specific thing, she kind of grabs her phone out, stops and has a quick look. Um, and then, of course, you can just listen to it as a podcast in the car. You can listen to it in the car and then you can go back later because you can as many times as you like and rewatch it. And I tell you, the first, it's like anything, isn't it? It's like a movie or anything you listen to or watch or read for the first time, you get tons, but then when you go back and go again, you're like, oh, oh, oh I, why didn't I hear that the first time around? Where was I actually daydreaming off to that I never heard that bit? Lindsay never said that for the first time. I'm sure they've changed the video. Um, same here, horrible day. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm booked onto your three-day workshop in July. Will I learn as much as the 15-day plus 10 courses? Oh, Yes, you will. There will be, there are things on that 15 day that we don't put into the uh, three day because we can't, we just can't fit it in. But there, there are also the practical side of things because we bring along to the three day, we bring a bunch of legs and we give you legs and you have to practically, you have to trim in front of us we teach you how to do it so the video of gary doing the guidelines of the trim you get to see that in the flesh you get to see him talking about it in real time so it's different it's it's a completely different kind of vibe but you get you get the same you don't get quite as much but once you've gone through the 15 and the 10 you'll turn up and i don't ever say the same thing twice gary never says the same thing twice because we've always got so much to say so you're going to get some something a bit different out of it oh look who's here gary oh hi caroline uh how, how are, are you? you how are you it's good to see you good that you're here uh, Julie with the Trekking Centre has said I can use a horse of hers as a case study. Poor Highland has never been sound since coming to Tiree. Oh, don't choose a difficult case study when you're choosing your first case study. Think about choosing something that might be easier for you, not a difficult one. Just, just putting it out there. We talk about that, though, in the module. Uh, knowledge is power. Yes, it is. Um, Jeanette, hi from France, from Northern France. Uh, I am watching the videos again to see what I missed the first time around. Yeah, yeah, right. There's tons of stuff. Even I watch them and Gary watches them and I go, well, oh, that's really good what she just said there. Oh, that was me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we might actually go in and say, oh, I haven't said that for a while. I might bring no. that back. <laughs> <laughs> bring that back. Yeah. Uh, never close 24 7 in paddock paradise with the possibility to go to two stables how lovely how fantastic please put a picture awesome. up on the group when you're done because we'd love to see it exciting can't wait neither can we we're really looking forward to seeing you and meeting you please do the three-day events in france we want to marion we can never get legs legs are our problem in france it's a real there's yeah i mean we could just turn up and just 
tell you about trimming, but it really it's not as a, it's not as it's not as powerful. It's not it's as not, powerful. And it, no, and there are obviously lots of hoof care professionals that are out there that do go out and do um, clinics, and they ask you to bring horses along, and then they've got auditors that go and watch. They don't pay quite as much because they're just watching, and then some other people will bring their horses and they get to trim. We don't think that that is a good idea at all for new owners it isn't it's not good for the horse because they've got to stand around and they don't like it because you're new and you don't know what you're doing it's very intense on us because we've got to be watching everything you do whereas when we're all in a lovely circle and you've all got a cadaver leg and you can take all the time in the world that's a different learning experience and it's yeah it's great so marion start researching where we can get some legs from because we've tried and we can't get them in the quantity that we want them. Louise says, yeah, don't pick a difficult first case study. Hear it from a one of our final year students who is about to qualify soon. You are, we will qualify soon. Randy, will do. Perfect. Right. We've, that's taken us 20 minutes to say all the hellos. Uh, right then. What are we going to talk about today? What did we say we were going to talk about? Agree? Not fair to do. No, it isn't. They do it all the time as well. And you know why? Because, um, because it's easy. We could do that. Honestly, we could go out and fill clinics everywhere. It would be easy peasy, but we won't do it because it's we have standards and we want you to learn a vast amount quite quickly you can't and and what's more if you're doing a horse let's say there's 10 people on a on a clinic you'd have quite quite a lot of horses and it takes ages for you to go you wouldn't learn you'd be stressed the horse would be stressed it's just not a great learning environment at all Celia says have you done a video of your track system have we? No, but we've got um, – Lee has done a really great video of his track system in Norfolk, and you will find that on the HMIS YouTube channel. So there's my YouTube channel, and then there's the Hoofy Marvelous International School of Horse and Hoof Care channel, and on there there's a few webinars, and Lee's track is great. He does a walk around his track, and he tells you all about it. Um so excited about New Zealand tour. Just started working on venues for Canterbury. Ah, oh, we are too. We are so excited. So excited. I'm not looking forward to the long flight, but I'm looking no. forward to visiting. <laughs> contracted heels. Ah, contracted heels. Uh, you need to take plaster casts off cadaver legs, then take them to France. Do you know, there is a company that actually does make fake legs that you can trim, but they're very expensive. I swear we couldn't do it. You, you. Not, it's not sad, the really. That we, yeah. It, we thought about that a little while ago. We thought you'd be, you'd be paying us thousands of pounds, and it's just not cost effective. <laughs> no, sadly, but it was a good idea. We did look into it. We did contracted we did. heels. I've seen it. It's very good. Okay, contracted heels. Let's talk about some contracted heels, right? Gally, ga Gary, Gally, Gally. Gally, 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 you do some chatting. Well, okay, I'm time, going to time tell time. you what I've been doing today, whilst okay. whilst Lindsay f sorts out some um, uh, some pictures and gets herself organised. So we, are, Lindsay and I, are in a fortnight uh, amongst other things. Uh, we ha are in our fortnight of doing our tutorials with all of our mm. students which oh, yeah. we absolutely love now i've got to tell you about one that i just had a really smiley moment about um, <laughs> now this lady came to see us in scotland and awesome lady her her farrier couldn't get to her as often as she'd like she thought right i've heard of the barefoot horse magazine I've had about two or three issues. Then I saw that there was a workshop coming up in Scotland. So she said, well, I'll go and do it. And she had a lovely time, as they all do. But now she signed up to become a student, you see. And she's uh, 
probably six, six come out six, 16 weeks in. And she, she, she was um, on a Zoom with me and, and she just had a grin from ear to ear. And she said, now I'm going to tell you about my pony. The toes were being chopped off. I was back in the day, I was looking for event lines, but they were chopped off so much, all the event lines had actually been rasped away. So I couldn't actually see this inflammation. But since I've been following the, the natural process, oh my God, these feet have got funky and I love them. <laughs> And she says, I love these funky feet. I've got this lovely healing angle coming in. The, the toe is not to the, to, the, to, the, to the ground yet, but it's getting there. There's a toe callus because that's exactly what she needs. The heels are down to where they need to be. P3's in the right place. And I turned around to her and I said, you've just described the complete recipe for a laminitic horse that's had its toes dumped and its recovery. You, you're, you're not even halfway through the first year of the training and you are experiencing this yourself. Oh, I, I can't tell you how happy it makes me feel when people realize this. And it really highlighted as well that it's, it is the path to hoof health. It really <laughs> is. It really is. And it never gets tired. It never does get tired. It never, All of these things tired. happen in sequence every single time. It's and, just amazing. And, and, you know, like we always say, don't we, that that, don't believe us believe the horse kind of thing but we we are constantly set people who just want to our detractors that want to come out against us for god knows why and um all the time they're they're saying aren't they they're they're saying where are your x-rays it's like do you know something where are your case studies full stop where are actually your case studies because we never ever see them so next time somebody says to you oh he'll be marvelous or whatever you just say to it's fine it's fine you you think what you'd like but let's have your case studies before you start hammering them because they are sticking loads of stuff out on facebook but you you aren't okay contraction where are we going to start i know where we'll start we'll start with I just I've just whipped something together. Oh god, let me just get that out of the way. Uh oh no. <laughs> just hold on a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you all still there? I can't see anybody. I thought you on. were ready. I'm nearly ready. Shut up. I'm I could have gone on for another 20 minutes at least. <laughs> Here we go. How many people how let me come back to you. How many people have heard of Bracy Clark? Oh, that's a beautiful and inspiring story. Um, yes, yeah, not you. How many people have heard of Bracy Clark? Do you know who Bracy Clark is? Tell me if you know who. No, Celia says no. Alison says if the horse goes from crippled to moving freely, the X rays are irrelevant. Yeah, they're there just simply for the detractors to say to just pull them. But I tell you what, even if you had the X rays, it wouldn't matter. It would not matter celia says no randy says no allison says yes lydia says i have steph says no Anne says no facebook is no Vivi okay who was bracy clark do you want to tell them yeah sure um bracy clark was in the early 1900s um a vet that lived in london late 1800s. and he late 1800s sorry um and he was uh, he was one of the founding members of um, oh. or was it early eighteen hundreds? I'm just I trying to actually know some. No, it isn't. So Bracy Clark, he died in eighteen sixty, right? Seventeen seventy one to eighteen sixty. There you go. That's okay. got that out of the way. 
Um, and he he was um, he he was a bit of a maverick actually. Um, he was seeing that there was a lot a lot of contraction going on with shod horses losing the the the, the function in the back of the hoof, and he 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 actually took some horses and that they were they were doing like plates um and drawings so he ended up getting uh this lady that would would help him um and she said right okay i'm quite happy with this uh, i'm going to take the shoes off so he did these plates and drawings um and the shoes came off uh put the shoes everything... on oh yeah sorry the the, the they, they love him. They I just barefoot. have to sort of cajole him along. They were, they, they were a barefoot bit. first, weren't they? Yes, they were they barefoot were, first. Yeah. That's Come right. On, I was going the wrong way. They were barefoot first, and then he said, "Well, I would like to monitor the I shoes going on, and monitor that progress." And right. over the years, the back of the foot, instead of it being all nice and wide with the frog. It got narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower because when the when you're effectively putting a clamp on the foot, it shuts down that mechanism at the back to a degree. It, it obviously it doesn't shut it down completely, but it's not as efficient as it would be if it was free as nature intended. Um, and yes, and I'm sure Lindsay's now got some images that she's going to. I have, up. and I'm going to show you. So, so just to fill in the gaps there, Bracy Clark, yeah, a couple of hundred years ago, was one of the first of five vets, male vets, men, to be part of the brand new Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, which was started by Edward Coleman. And Edward Coleman and Bracy Clark fell out because Edmund Cole, Edward Coleman at the time was patenting a bunch of different shoes uh, for horses. There, there wasn't really an, uh, a full equine side of things. They were the first vet. They were doing all, all sorts of animals, but then they started to hone down on looking at equines. And so Edward Coleman was doing a load, uh, w w had a bunch of his own shoes. Bracy Clark was a maverick. They didn't like him. I resonate with Bracey Clark very much. Gary and I resonate with Bracey <laughs> Clark. Uh, because he started to see stuff with his eyes. And, and he was probably the first person ever, I think, in, in modern, well, you call it modern times, in, 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 it was certainly in the UK, in the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, that really started to study the hoof. And he came along, and now Callison said, he followed a horse from bed to, sh to shod with picks annually for two to four years. So they made plates of these picks, because he obviously didn't have photographs. So they did drawings. And he, had the, he took this mare, who was one of his client's horses, and he... They shod the mare and then they looked at the foot and the changes over three years, three, three to four years. And then the, the owner freaked out and just went, stop, don't, I'm not doing it anymore when she saw what was happening. And so this was his proof that this is what happens. And he said, shoeing shortens horses' lives. It causes problems. It contracts the foot. And nobody wanted to listen to him. And interestingly, to this day, we don't have those kind of studies Nowadays, what we have is we have retrospective studies where we have the shoe on the foot and we take the shoe off and the foot goes the other way. But it never goes completely all the way back to what it should have been before the shoe was ever put on. He's there are nobody. There's nobody out there doing these studies. I don't know a single owner that I ever go to that's maybe had their horse from the moment they were shod. When I said to them, did you take photos, photographs of your horse's feet? Did you measure them? So many people will tell you, shoeing hasn't changed my horse's foot once a bit. And you're like, oh, you can remember that, can you? You've measured, have you? You knew how what the back of the foot looked like, do you? We have never in the history of all the time that we have been hoof care professionals taking off hundreds of shoes, have we ever found a horse that doesn't decontract slightly when the shoes come off, which shows you they contracted when the shoes went on. And depending on the strength of the back of the foot and the type of the horse, 
you are, when you put a shoe on, you are going down a road of contraction. It happens all the time. It's like it just doesn't not not happen. And in fact, there's a lovely lady who we haven't responded to in the group who put a post up yesterday who we are planning on responding to, who put a picture of, um, I think it was a thoroughbred, because they are very, very prone um, to contraction. They all have it, but thoroughbreds uh, can contract hideously. And he has got a massive amount of contraction. If you go and have a look at the post on the Phoenix group, he's he's about 19 years old. So we are going to go back and have a look at that. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to show you what Bracey Clark found. For those of you who've not seen it, this is what he found. Uh, there we go. Can you see it? Yeah. So this was the natural foot. This image here on the left was the natural foot. This was the shape of this mare's foot. Nice wide frog. And you're already all looking down, aren't you? You're all scanning down. Nice wide frog. Natural flare, but totally fine. That was the natural foot. That horse needed that natural flare. At 12 months shod, this is what the foot looked like. Remarkably, a bit like a shoe. <laughs> right? Look at the frog already starting to change. Now, these aren't made up images. These are exact replicas of what happened to this horse's foot. Then when we get to two years shod, you can see what has started to happen. So the bulbs have started to really contract. You look from here to here to here. You start to see that contraction, really starting to notice it here. You're not starting to notice this central sulcus that was just a nice depression at the back. Looks like it's moving forward. Can you see that? It's at the back here, but then it's moving forward and getting elongated. The frog is getting thinner and punier, and all of the back of the foot is not as wide and as useful as it was at the beginning. And look at the shape of the actual foot itself. Then when you get to three years shod, We've got the full contraction going on and the, the, the horse's foot looks completely different. You look at this compared to back here and look at the difference. This was that horse's foot. Now, you tell me that that mare, and this is horses all over the world, right? This is not just what happened in, you know, in the early 1800s. This is horses all over the world because shoes haven't really changed. There are, can only be one kind of shape, really. In fact, nowadays... It's kind of even worse because you've got shoes out of a out of a drawer, and um, and you put, you know, a, 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 they they fit the foot to the shoe. Back then, at least they tried to fit the shoe to the foot. But this is a, an insidious thing that happens over a long period of time. And so this mare would had her pillar of support here. You can see you can see her natural shaping, nice little flare there, and it had completely it disappeared totally disappeared where i'm just going to go back and uh, have a look at this yeah can you see that that's interesting isn't it interesting interesting right now let me show you some of the images where have it where's it gone uh whoop. some of the images that we have so let's just go actually let's go this way so this here i'll just take that off the screen these are all just a few images, and we have hundreds of them, of horses that we have come along to to take their shoes off, right? Hundreds and hundreds of photographs. These are just tiny few, like not even close to as many, you know, like we've done so many. So this, this horse here, he was... Uh, I could tell you a little bit about each one of them. This one here on the top left-hand corner, he was a dressage horse and he was quite an expensive horse. And he was told when I turned up, this is what I saw. And the and he was uh, not quite, oh, I think he was about seven, something like that. He wasn't very old. And the, he pulled a tendon, funnily enough. And the vet had told the owner to keep him in his stable. So he, when I met him, he'd been in his stable for quite some time uh, and trying to recover. And the owner was sticking cotton wool down here because she was trying to 
stop the infections that this poor horse was was having in the back of his foot in the central sulcus. Can you just imagine what that must have been like? Now, he's a dressage horse. We spent a bit of time on sand, sand going up into this bit of uh, this awful sulcus here, this awful squeezed together foot. This is the true reality of shoeing. This has not been caused just because he had a weak back of the foot. All of this was caused because of shoeing. Here's another one. This this was a, a gelding and I came to see him and you can see that, that this part where the lateral cartilages are, are wider than the bit underneath where his walls are. And as you can see it on the same, because everything has been pushed together and this would just get worse and worse. These poor horses trying to walk around and you can see the contraction here. This was, um, this was a thoroughbred. You can see how they've been flattening out the shoes at the back and you can see how contracted. Doesn't that remind you of that image of Bracey Clark where the sulcus has moved forward, it's elongated and it's being reshaped. This one here, barefoot, but because they were leaving, it had been shod in the past, but because they were leaving the heels too high, the foot was still contracting because he wasn't able to use the back of his foot. He also had lots of skin issues as well. This was a mare. You can see here that um, she's got skin issues in the back of her foot. She's back of her, uh, her past and she, she is, she was, I guess she must have been about 18 at this point. This is his her left fore after I took the shoe off and I hadn't even trimmed. I just basically took the shoe off. Look at the difference between this foot and this foot. Not a great photo, I, 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 I know. But look how off the ground this frog is. Look by just taking the shoe off what we've got going on over here. And this one is in a heart bar shoe. You can see completely shut down the back of the foot, which is already contracted. So this is what we see a lot of. And people will swear blind that shoes don't cause harm. And if it's not broke, why fix it kind of mentality. But this is what they do, and they all do it every time. And this here is one of our admin's horses, actually. And she'd taken the shoes off. And this is only five months in from removing these shoes. And already the back of the foot was wider by 0.5 centimeters on each side. It didn't fit. And it would carry on doing that as it decontracts. So we can see it retrospectively. But we don't, we're unable to do it. Um, we're unable to do it the other way around because people just don't think it's important. They don't go, well, I think I'll just take a picture of my horse's foot before I put a shoe on. And then maybe, because if everybody did that, they'd be like Bracey Clark's client ripping the shoes off before you knew it because what changes they'd see in their horse's foot, right? Um, Celia says, my horse has been bare for three years this coming May and his hooves have grown and expanded. His frogs still look a bit scrawny. Unfortunately, the frogs become functional. They do. But they never, we've never really found that when they've been quite heavily contracted, that the frogs really ever get back to the way that they probably should have been. But they still are functional and enough. Functional enough. Uh, if only folk would keep a series of shoes. Yeah, right. We we always say to our owners when we take the shoes off, keep the shoes. Do not remove them. Keep them in your tack room. Don't chuck them away. Keep them in your tack room because in six months we're going to put them on again and in a year we're going to put them on again. So we're doing it the backwards, if you like, to what Bracey Clark did. Um, yeah, 24 years. Yeah, so he'll he'll never get the back of the foot and the digital cushion that he needed. but it'll be far better than he was when he was in it. Lisa, Lisa Charles. Oh, I don't know that name. Hello, Lisa Charles. Now, don't be believing your eyes. You have to do what you're told and what has always been done. Yeah, right. Don't believe me. Do you believe me or your lying eyes? Um, Lydia says, I have a reprint of his original book, Hippod Hippodinomia. Uh, I, and I showed you that, a picture of that book. Uh, are the true structure laws and uh, and uh, economy of the horse's foot. Yes. Brilliant. Okay. So let me just show you this. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Where are we? That one. 
let's let's whiz over here and show you this let's just show you so this this is that same horse i was talking about the dressage horse look at this how tiny it is over at the back and have a look at where his lateral cartilages are here again on this horse it's a little bit wider obviously than his but this is still contracted can you see and this is what happens to the lateral cartilages so atrophication and shrinkage of the soft tissues in the back half of the foot the caudal hoof particularly the frog digital cushion and lateral cartilages and potentially the entire hoof. So when these horses go to put their feet down, because their cartilages are now also contracted, this pastern area and P1 uh, and P2, who are now descending with the fetlock from up here, are now struggling in this area here. Plus the digital cushion, which is living inside here, has now become atrophied as well. So the whole of the back of the foot becomes, uh, uh, is, is not as functional as it should be. And the vascular, they now know that a great deal of the venous return that is going up the back of the leg goes up the back of the foot, right? And that this needs to be functional in order for that venous return to go up the leg, get back to the heart, before it goes to the lungs, before it comes back to the heart, that has got to be functional. And when it isn't, you've got a problem because that is going to put strain on everything, the circulatory system, the heart, the whole lot, all because they put shoes on thinking it was a good idea. And this cotton wool has been shoved in every foot. He was shod on all four feet. And all the vet wanted this horse to do was be put in a stable. He never even commented on all of this that was going on. Why didn't he comment? Because it's common. Because it's what he sees, sees every day. Every single day. So that is contraction. Just because it's common doesn't make it right. We got to open our eyes, haven't we? But there's there, the there's so much more going on there than just oh, it's just a contracted back of the foot. The entire hoof mechanism has been shut down, which means everything in the foot, which means is is not working as it should be, which means that puts the rest of the leg in peril, which means the joints are in trouble which means the back is in trouble and everything else and they then have a rider on and in his case trying to do fancy moves with him in a dressage, dressage uh, ring i don't know whether any of you have seen but um at the tokyo olympics you know you hear about oh he's the farrier for the for the olympic team etc and at the Tokyo Olympics, with our dressage horses, our top dressage horses, many of them had heart bar shoes on, if not all of them, because it's preventative. Mental, isn't it? Asking these horses to perform airs and perform all these dancey moves and to do things that are extraordinary behaviors that horses do not do over and over again. They are extraordinary behaviors. And we're asking them to do them on very, very compromised feet, which are narrow and are, are not the width that they should be for the size of the animal above. Crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy uh my mare and i are reversing this for 18 months the iron rims were taken off the day she arrived and hanging on the gate to rust don't get rid of them yeah where they should be uh we discussed how my 16 year old boy's front heels were contracted despite never having been shod because his heels were left too high bars too long and were compacted absolutely it's not i mean it's it's all shoes, not all barefoot. All shod horses will contract. Not all barefoot horses will contract, but barefoot horses will 
if they are not trimmed correctly. Um, how reversible is it? Well, um, it depends on the age of the animal. It depends on how far it's gone. It will, it will on every horse, decontract a certain amount. To a degree, yeah. And also, I think as well, what you've got to think about as well is when they were shod. A lot of horses are shod and started when they're only two. And if you're thinking about when a, when a horse is shod, uh, when a horse stops growing, it uh, doesn't matter whether it's a Shetland or a Shire, um, they take between six and eight years to fully mature. If you're shutting down that hoof any time before that, can you imagine what's going on with shoeing young horses? It's absolutely criminal. It's medieval. It's barbaric. We have upticks in arthritis, hock arthritis, foot arthritis, side bone. Pra I, I see side bones so often now. I'm like, oh, there's another. Oh, there's another. And I'm sure that's what the vets think. Oh, don't worry about it. It's just a bit side bone. Um, you see there's an uptick in kissing spine. Kissing spine, real uptick in kissing spine. Getting on a horse, shoeing it and getting on board or even just getting on a barefoot horse too early. But can you imagine what it's like getting on a shod horse and the spinal processes are the last thing to finish, you know, the, the growth plates. Fusing, to fusing, yeah. Fusing. Crazy. Just Remember crazy. when we said the welfare in the needs a shake up in every aspect of the equine world. And it's sometimes you think to yourself, I know Gary and I do, that this is too much of a mountain to climb. But we've got to start somewhere. And we're and and you guys being on this journey with us, it is is brilliant. Isn't it depressing that vets don't know something that was first described, not by a layman, but by one of their own? Yeah, but he was he was he was ridiculed. They laughed at him. He then spent the rest of his career writing, researching. He used to ride around London on a barefoot stallion, going to visit his clients. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it is crazy. But this is ever thus. It has ever been thus. We are hoof care professionals and we have been, we have been ostracized from our entire community. I mean, we haven't helped ourselves, have we? Because we've not been, you know, compliant. <laughs> we're not very compliant. So we are like him, like Bracey Clark. We were, we've been ridiculed. We've been laughed at. We've been pushed out. That's fine. Because like Bracey Clark realized you can't change the professionals. It must have been really frustrating for him. He would have changed. And he tried to, he even tried to create a shoe that was a flexible shoe that would, would, that would try and flex so that the back of the foot, he even tried, tried to, to, to invent something like that. You know, it was, imagine what that must have been like. It's hard enough nowadays. But we say, Bracey Clark, we are carrying on your work. We are carrying on your work. I believe this also impedes circulation. It does, especially in the fronts. When I was taking my acupressure, we worked on several performance horses. Being a trimmer, of course, I looked at the feet first. The ones with contracted feet had very cold legs from the knee down. Oh, yeah. And we've not even scratched the surface of all the other problems that shoes cause. Um, there's a, what's it called? Um, hand, there's a, there's a, when people work with power tools, they 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 are only in in the in the workplace. Health and safety. There's even standards, international standards for it, to stop them from using power tools for certain lengths of time because they get uh, injuries. Like they call it white finger, don't they? Where they get injuries yeah. because of the vibrations, and there's a certain vibration that causes your body to break down right tissues to be detrimental it, to tissues it's, it, it's called it's HAV. A vibration and, a, and it's a frequency that's right it's a frequency hav frequency oh i can't find it anyway they know that the frequency that shoes are uh, that that frequency is on that range also metal 
It's a good conductor. Have you ever seen sparks fly when horses go along roads? Their shoes are getting warm and that is transmitted straight up into the foot. Conversely, because it's metal, it's a good conductor, right? Conversely, they also get blooming cold. Have you ever... The reason that we have shovels with plastic handles is because if we were to put our hand on something that was metal when it's cold, it's like, oh, I can't even touch it. And yet we're expecting our horses to walk around with freezing feet because that cold is being transmitted straight up through that shoe. These are things people don't think about. Also, the fact that they completely eradicate all natural wear patterns and pillars of support and they turn it on its head and cause the horse to walk around and actively on their passive areas. I could go on. I could go on. Uh, uh, yes, it is like Chinese child foot binding. It is. We saw one the other day, in fact, just said, Gary and I said exactly that. Yes, but look at how they are also forcing these dressage horses to do their moves by the iron they have in their mouths. I know. And they say, don't they, the FEI, that it's changing. They'd better change fast and they better change it in the warm up ring, too, because people can see them in the warm up ring. Because in the warm up ring, they do, they're do they allowed to do roll car and they're allowed to do things that they're not allowed to do now in the main arena. People are watching. People have got cameras. Well said, Gary. Riding a horse at least at less than five or six year old is criminal. Mm hmm. Nova, I'm so glad my Highland has never had a shoe on. He hasn't. He hasn't, has he? Bless him. Never had a shoe on. Lovely feet. Uh, you guys, nice, uh, nice to see you again, Nova. Uh, you guys are so amazing, keeping telling the horse world the truth. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. We are doing exactly that. Nova Pearson, me too. My mare is 11, never mid shod and broken at six. She had lovely feet. Marvellous. Brilliant. Awesome. And this is what we want to see more and more of horses that have never, ever had a shoe on their foot, but also have had good hoof care. A few days before I bought her, my mare's breeder forbid me to go with them hacking with the horse in hand because the path was not fit for a bear for equine. So much pressure to be shot. Oh, I could tell you so many stories about people that are very famous, but I won't because that would be naughty. <laughs> Uh, I'll keep that to something. Some some to, to, to my students learn those things. Caroline says hello from Portugal. Hello, Caroline. Uh, the horse can't feel the ground either. No proprioception. Mental. I ask people who want to run in rigid ski boots. Yeah, and 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 just hang on one cotton picking moment. How many of you right now have got metal on the bottom of your shoes? Okay, we can't fix the metal to our feet, but how many have got metal on your shoes? Imagine having metal actually strapped to your foot and going out in the cold. That wouldn't be nice, would it? How many of you have got metal on your rubber soled, flexible soled feet? Now, that for those people who go, oh, yeah, but work boots, yeah, okay. But the soles are still rubber. The the metal's there for to you know to to you know like the toe caps etc. We don't spend day to day. Can you imagine if we were to go out onto that tarmac road, Gary, you and me tomorrow, and we strapped metal to the even if we put some horseshoes on the front and the back of our shoes and we strapped it on, and then we went and you did it. You put the metal on your shoes. I didn't, and then me and you had a race down the road. How would you feel? How would that oh, make your um, knees feel? feel and your hips? I wouldn't feel very nice, and it would probably be the first time that you beat me in a race. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd be slipping and sliding all over the place. And it'd feel horrible, wouldn't it? And it would feel horrible. I wouldn't have control of my limbs. It would. I would imagine it would make my pelvis hurt. Um, and all the joints in between the, my feet uh, upwards, yes, uh, it, it wouldn't give me confidence for sure. Navicular rag sort of comes to mind there. Mm. Mm. Um, 
Our horses have been barefoot for four and a half years, only shod for two to three before, <laughs> thanks to you. The only problem I have is with my horse's frog in this wet, muddy weather. They break up and become scraggy on you. We will never see a shoe with them. That's not a problem. Frogs can get scraggy. It's okay. You just don't want them to get thrushy. Um, my shoes are chains like the butchers use. <laughs> I'm assuming like hooks. <coughs> you get the short straw again, Gary. Yeah, I could have said that I was going to have the metal. No, he gets to do that. <laughs> Something else, though. Think on, think on this, right? Um, think on how, let's say you were barefoot and you were running down a road. You'd take shorter strides than if suddenly you went from the road, like a kid, you remember when you were running about, larking around, following a football or whatever, and you'd have to run onto the road bit and you'd be like, oh, hard, take short strides. And then suddenly you get to the park again and you get onto the grass and then you'd leg it because you, it was soft, it was giving, and you'd be able to increase your stride length. Horses that are barefoot can really feel that proprioception, really feel it and change their stride length accordingly to mitigate all of those things that are happening in their limbs and their joints, but not shod horses can't feel that the same. And also their feet can't expand as they should do naturally. When, when the fetlock's coming down, it can't it can't give at the back of the foot like it's meant to. Um, Uta, I wish I'd known you years ago. I guess my horse would still be alive. Mm, I had to put her down to sleep at the age oh, at the age of thirty one. She was shod my pony. Not he's forty eight now. Oh, I love oh, well hearing done. these stories. Not the fact that you obviously put, but the age. I know, right? But what you don't know, like Gary said, I think yesterday, when you know what you don't know, it's okay. When you know now what you didn't know, it's okay because you're going to change it. But when you know what you didn't know and you still you still keep on doing the wrong things, that's when it becomes irresponsible. And our plan, our massive mission in life is to make you all aware so that that cognizant, cognizant uh, dissonance Cog cognitive dissonance. <laughs> cognitive dissonance. She had to add a drink or anything. <laughs> I know, right? It's the first time I buggered that up. Cognitive dissonance <laughs> is a thing. It's a real thing. Uh, yes, uh, no, shoot, shoot, shoot. I, I, I think the shoes are going to cause some harm. But no, it's not causing harm. Yeah, it might do. It's not. might do. It's not. <clears throat> um, thanks, and they're not thrushy. That's an important thing. Um, first thing I do when I get home is take shoes and socks off. Second is the bra. I'm so with you there. I am so with you. I know exactly what you mean. Love working around bare, walking around barefoot, swinging free, swing them free. You've got, you don't know what we're talking about. You'd never understand. It's so important just to let it all hang out my horse angie says angie medler hi angie my horse my poor horse briefly she got a tear in the ddft in the hoof D deep digital flexor tendon in the hoof had to stay in and got too fat and then got laminitis of course the vet wanted shoes i said no way i'm working with someone and we didn't cut her toes but it has been a process it is a process you takes ages to get there and then it takes a long time double the amount of time to come back She's also had caudal failure. The professionals have let my horse down. So now I have to become a pro. I don't think she'd ever had shoes, but definitely contracted. Now you have to learn. Now you, you have to step up for your horse because I can tell you this right now, everybody watching here, you you the people that come are the professionals do not have your horse as their priority. They don't. The only person that does is you. You. Well done, Angie. Well done, Phoenix Warrior. Um, Karen says, I only wear barefoot shoes myself now. Yeah, so does Gary. Not me. But then I spend my entire not, time. I don't. I, um, I wear barefoot shoes, shoes but not 
Not in, in, in its entirety, because I work with horses and I need to protect my feet. Um, so there are aspects, but I do try and wear barefoot shoes as much as possible. And it's helping me, actually. Hmm. I felt a big difference. And, and I have to say, that when I first started, I ached a lot. Because it made my body change because I was in barefoot shoes and my feet got wider and and all of those things yeah it happens to us too it happens to us too <laughs> ladies that wear bras know how the horses suit feels like with shoes on we do <laughs> 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 okay guys that's it we're going to call it a day today an hour and five minutes you've had your quota we're going to try and keep it down to under an hour and a half because it goes on too long right so tomorrow don't know what we're going to talk about i keep saying we're going to talk about breakover we've done contraction now although we'll probably revisit it at another time um yeah i hope you've enjoyed this evening i hope it made you think uh i i think that as a suggestion we... go it is thursday tomorrow you said i'd have to remember what did i have to remember that we did last thursday and we could do on another thursday if people would like it i don't know second part of the gut oh would you like god has it been a week since we did that crazy okay it's been stuck on my tape in my desk, so I didn't that forget. <laughs> right, we'll do. We're going to do gut tomorrow. If you want to learn, know more about the rest of the gut, we've done the first part of the gut. We're going into the small intestine. Be with us tomorrow. Gut part two. See you then. Bye bye. <laughs>